Presentation for our end of cycle review inspection results for one part into the construction project. My name is Bob Hay, I'm branch chief in Region 2 with oversight responsibility for the inspections for construction. Keep meeting. I'm going to sit down just to feel more comfortable doing that. So, this is a meeting where public participation is actively sought. And the reason for that is that we want this meeting to be as beneficial to the public as possible. Our goal here is to inform the public, again, of the results of our inspection for 2013 and how we assess that inspection results as far as TVA's performance on the project. If you have questions or comments during the presentation, please go ahead and stop me or ask the question. Provide a comment. I think that will be a little more, uh, more beneficial to the actual participation and just the of a meeting and presentation of the work we'll go for. Um, the meeting, the first meeting, is scheduled for one hour, so we have plenty of time for your comments, questions, things like that. My presentation is not going to last an hour, so again, I just want to give you an opportunity to, to look, make you feel sure that if there are questions or comments, you don't need to wait till the end. Ask them as we go on again. It may be more relative than the point I'm making your question regarding it. Um, I mentioned that this is the first meeting, so we're actually having two meetings this afternoon. And we did that, hopefully not to confuse people, but to provide, again, in, in the sake of um, full disclosure to the public of what the NRC is doing regarding the last meeting. So the first meeting is to go over, again, I've repeated this several times, so I've many times more, of the results of our inspection for 2013. And I'll go through the presentation, and you'll get a good understanding of what we inspected out here, and the final assessment results. So I want to focus the first meeting on that. Again, looking back at the performance in 2013 and how we view TBA's work out here. The second meeting will be a status of the project. And that's really a looking forward meeting, both from an inspection standpoint and a licensing standpoint. Uh, so there's there's two meetings. Obviously, both of them are related to Watts Park and two but a little different focus for each one. Up here at the table, I've got with me Justin Poole, who's the Senior Project Manager in NRR for um, licensing activities for Watts Project 2, and Tom Nazario, who's the Senior Res Inspector out here at Unit 2, overseeing inspections for construction. So the agenda. Um, introduction. So I, I mentioned that the three folks who are up here, also in the audience, we have uh, several folks from our headquarters um, office, and there are, again, who's, who's responsible for licensing, what's part of two. And then we also have individuals from Region 2 office um, in Atlanta responsible for the inspection program for what's part of two. And then I'll get later on, I'll introduce the red inspectors who are out here for the two project. What I want to do is provide a little background on the two project. I think that will give you a good perspective of, of the history and why we're doing some of the things that we are as far as our inspection program. I'll describe our inspection, construction inspection program for you too. And again, it's a little different because of the history for Watts Park and we had to take that into its TBA performance. This is our assessment of, of their performance in 2013 based on the results of the inspections that we performed during the year. I want to provide an overview of the inspection construction program, kind of give you an understanding of the things that we look at. I want to describe our level of effort to give you an appreciation of the amount of work we've done out here as far as our inspection. I'm going to introduce the res inspector staff and talk about their uh, purposes and what they do, and respond to questions and comments. We perform an assessment of performance for 2013. That was done at an internal NRC meeting where members, pretty much a lot of folks right here um, within the NRC, get together and go over the performance. And we've got a formal process for doing that. That's an internal NRC meeting. We issue a letter with the results of that meeting to TBA. It's a public letter. I can give you the ML number. I've got a copy here. 
So it provides the assessment results. The other thing it provides is a schedule for upcoming inspections. Those inspections will be planned for in 2014. So we held that meeting in Atlanta on February 10th to do our insightful assessment result assessment meeting. And then the assessment, the annual assessment letter was issued on February 28th of this year. So our construction mission statement. Um, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm not going to read all of it. But really the goal there is to ensure as a plant is being constructed that it's being built properly. With the end goal that if and when that plant becomes operational, it will operate safely. Right now, Wasp Park is perfectly safe for when it's being constructed. Only when it becomes operational is there a concern as far as safety. And you want to make sure that the plant is built in accordance with this design. TVA follows instructions, their written instructions, and they put all the material into that project <coughs> that it can't operate safely. So that's really our mission statement and the goal of, of the construction inspections for Watts Bar for all nuclear facilities. So some background for you too. In 1973, uh, the NRC issued a construction permit to TVA to build Watts Bar 2 sites, both in one and two. Uh, and the construction started around that time and, and continued on. In 1985, TVA suspended construction at Watts Bar due to quality assurance problems. Um, and from then on until um, mid-2000, 2007 is when the TVA informed the NRC that they planned to resume construction on Watts Bar 2. So there was very little construction done between 1985 and 2007. Um, in 2008, uh, the construction permit was extended for Unit 2 to 2013, and then later it was extended to 2016. And then the last bullet there is just the recognition that in April of 2012, PBA announced that the project had been, had been extended as far as the, the schedule for completion, and that schedule for completion currently is 2015 next year. So, three programs and how they fit into TVA's current inspection program. So the three major chapters I just described, they have been in place uh, since the early 70s, and, and those are the inspection programs that we use for really inspecting, construction, uh, and testing of all the current operating plants in the U.S. Again, they were uh, initially developed in the 70s, and they were used in the 70s, most recently, Watts Bar Unit 1 is, is the most recent plant that was inspected under these programs. Um, the NRC has changed uh, since then. Uh, the way we do business is different. So what we had to do was develop kind of an overarching program that, that set uh, expectations and some of the processes that we have in place right now and how they were different than what we did back in the 70s and 80s. So, Chapter 2517 collection program is this slide is really talking about the elements of the inspection program. What are the specific things that you want to look at in Watts Bar Unit 2? And, and because of the history, it dictated much of what we were doing here uh, in developing the inspection program and, and the attributes of that inspection program. So I'm not going to go over all of these, but some of them I think are worthwhile mission. Uh, given the history of Watts Bar, I told you, you know, construction started in the 70s and went through the 80s. Um, there were uh, issues and whether we had a violation of inspection, inspector qualified item that we may not have closed, it may still have been open when we pretty much stopped inspection on unit two and eight five. So we had to go back and look at all of those to see if there were any open issues that we needed to not follow up on see if the issue can be resolved. Um, we look at generic communication. So the inspection effort. Um, in 2013, we had three rest inspectors. And because of the pace of activities and this year, in 2014, we've increased that to four rest inspectors. And in our plan, we will continue four rest inspectors until completion of construction. Um, the amount of hours was uh, 13,131. So, how do you put that in perspective? Well, it, it's a lot of effort, I can tell you that right now. Um, TVA can certainly attest to it, but it's a lot of inspection effort. Um, I went back and I looked at what a typical operating plant would get, and I think it's in the 5,000 hour range, so it's almost two and a half times what a typical plant would get. 
Uh, and that, in 2013, was a slight increase from what we did in 2012. They were adequate to support ongoing construction activities. And that the uh, uh, TVA was constructing facility at an acceptable level of quality. During the 12 month period, there were 12 violations identified by NRC inspections. Three of those violations uh, related to the commercial grade dedication program, and they were characterized by a severe level three problem. The nine other violations were severe level four. We had no substantive cross-cutting issues uh, during the period. For the severity level three problem, the NRC assessed TBA $70,000 civil penalty associated with that issue. And we have performed a follow-up inspection for that uh, severity level three problem uh, back in, in February. And it will be documented in the inspection report that will be issued in April. So that was i will show you on the right hand side uh, significant issue, escalated enforcement being one of the significant issues that we would do something. Um, we additional inspections we performed in that area as a result of that issue. Um, and as activities become available for us to look at, meaning TBA has accomplished something or they're performing something, we'll schedule the regional inspectors to come out and look at those activities. So we're continuing with the planned inspections. Um, I'll tell you, the second meeting is where we're at in that inspection program. Clearly, we have some work left to do this, this year to finish those items that we uh, scoped out for a while. Pre op testing inspections, uh, we only started that in 2013. We did limited inspection for pre op testing. Uh, that will increase dramatically in 2014, and we'll be under inspecting those. Um, Fukushima, there's related modifications that TPA's performance for Fukushima follow-up. We're inspecting those items, those modifications as they take place, and then eventually, once all those modifications and the new equipment are installed, we'll do a follow-up inspection on uh, are they capable of uh, perform the uh, temporary instruction. The operational readiness inspections, I mentioned those, those are the other part of the 2513 um, main chapter, and we've started those inspections as TVA gets closer to, to their eventual operation of Unit 2. Those programs that they need to support Unit 2 being operational are uh, being matured to the point where we can now inspect them for starting to do those operational readiness inspections. Questions or comments? Uh, yes, sir. I have several questions for you. You mentioned uh, the findings on this uh, referring to the commercial grade materials being used, not expected, uh, and quality assurance and assessments of that it was a severity level three. Could you briefly explain the uh, other severity levels, one, two, three, in brief, if you could, you know, in, in, to include four? Is, is there a brief description that you could give of those severity levels and how three fits into the, the tree there? Um, probably not to the justice I need to. Um, <laughs> yes, our enforcement process has different severity levels. Um, and they're one, two, three, and four, as you mentioned. Uh, one, and, and I don't have the, the definition of it. I don't know to do it. One and two are, are significant issues, uh, one being more significant than, than uh, two. Very rarely do we issue them until we have issued them. But, I mean, severe level three are uncommon, but they do occur. Um, severe level four are the majority of, of our violations, and you know, I don't even want to venture a guess, but in the 90%, I'm sure, and probably the high 90%, you know, the violations that we issue are severe level four violations. So it, it's, it's not very often that, that we issue something more than a certain level three. And we have, again, I'm not giving a good example, but we have a, a very defined process on how we go about looking at um, severe levels. Um, 
especially when you get into the escalated enforcement, so there's level three and above. Um, it involves both the region and our headquarters office. We have an office of enforcement. They get involved in escalated enforcement to get to make sure we're following the enforcement um, policy and, and making sure we're consistent in the application of that. Thank, thank you. I, that, that's, that's good. I said my name's Gary Morgan. Uh, on slide 12, you mentioned there was 87 items closed. You also mentioned there was 500 items inspected. How many items uh, were identified as, as problem areas? You say you closed 87, but how many total items were identified as problem areas? So there were, um, when we developed the program, and we've added on a little bit each year as, as new things come up, but there's currently right now there's 547 items that we have to inspect for the last part of the I mentioned in 2013 we closed 87 of those items. We inspected more than we said, but we closed 87 of them. The problems, I'm not sure how you want to find problems, but the fact that we had violations, there were 12 violations associated with our inspections last year. So if you want to associate problems to violations, that, that would be one benchmark. Um, okay. Oh. Now, we... So you've closed... It, let me let me phrase it like this: Out of the 547 items, you've closed out 87 of them. Now, and I probably misled that. Okay. I was trying to give um, a view of the amount of work we did in 2013. Currently, we have closed 380 in 308, 360, 308. Uh, there's a number of open items. It's 169 right now. That's where we stand. Focus more on the ones that we have still left to inspect. So that's 169. Do the math between 147 and 169. That's the number that we have currently closed. And that would include the 87 we closed in 2013. I got you. Okay. Are there any of those items that are still open that uh, could be probable violations that you're taking a closer look at? Um, none that are identified right now. We have a means to be able to track something like that. If we do an inspection and we find a potential problem but we haven't fully resolved it, we can call that an unresolved item. Uh, I don't believe we have any unresolved items open right now for what we need to. Now, there was a mention of the steam generators earlier. Uh, and of course there's a problem with those steam generators. Do you all plan on doing operational testing with the defective steam generators in place? or will those steam generators be replaced before operational testing will occur? The uh, pre-operational testing that I mentioned you know, is part of our inspection program that we have to do before we plan those lessons. So we'll perform those pre-operational inspections of testing that TVA does. Um, so that will be accomplished. Specific testing to the steam generators, I'm not sure um, the level of inspection there or even the level of testing. But TVA does not plan to change steam generators before the plant is licensed. So the existing steam generators will be in place as they do the testing and as we do our inspections. So y'all are going to allow the plant to go forward with defective steam generators in place? No, I, I did not say that. Um, I didn't say that the steam generators are defective. I understand TVA has placed an order for to buy and purchase new steam generators. Yes, sir. It, it, the TVA has indicated there's defective metal in the steam generators, and it has shown that uh, in previous examples, uh, you know, there's a possibility that those steam generators cause defective metal. Could uh, there could be disintegration of the parts, and of course, create problems. So, uh, you know, I'm interested in this, and the public, of course, ought to be interested in this. Uh, just how defective are these generators? Is it going to be a problem in the startup? Uh, could there be denigration of the materials uh, since it's already been said they're going to have to be replaced? Yeah, I uh, mentioned earlier uh, the repurchment program, you know, uh -huh. how they're looking at the equipment currently in place to ensure that it's capable of uh, performing its function once the plant becomes operational. Part of that was where team, TBA examined the steam generators using uh, non destructive testing methods, looking for flaws, problems make sure they were sound and they're acceptable 
for use right now. We did monitor that. We inspected those to make sure that the examination techniques were acceptable and that they provided adequate coverage of the steam generating tube. So, so right now, our, our view would be, you know, TVA has done the inspections that they need to, to perform to make sure the steam generators are capable of performing the function. And what we're looking at really would be a safety function and integrity of the tubes. So we have looked at that, and we believe, you know, that there's no reason to believe that there's going to be an immediate problem. Now, if there is a long-term degradation mechanism, you know, this is not new to the industry. The industry has been dealing with that, and the NRC has been monitoring industry's actions to ensure the degradation is understood and that it's not to the point where it would have possible damage during an during operating cycle. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, Watts Bar has had a dubious history going back several years. You know, of course, the current plant that, you know, it may come on operation here, inspection. You know, it's off and on again. Uh, and, and Watts Bar 1, there was problems in Watts Bar 1 with, uh, uh, with falsified documents. And uh, Watts Bar 2, there's been a problem with falsified documents. And allegedly that's been corrected. We hope it's been corrected. I think you all have indicated it's been corrected. TVA has been in, uh, indicated it's corrected. Uh, but it's what concerns me is uh, from the looking at history, you know, looking at the history of the plant. And I, I trust y'all's opinion in y'all's inspection. I trust that. But looking at the history, there's also a history there which involves whistleblowers, which involves attempted murder of whistleblowers, uh, which involves uh, legal action against the TVA and, and contractors. Or can you give the public assurance that currently at Watts Bar, there's no skullduggery going on with threats of whistleblowers or threats of employees. Uh, that all systems, uh, when you put your rubber stamp or you put your seal of approval on that, that everything is up and above board and that uh, uh, we're not going to have these problems that we've had in the past. And if you do see them, you're going to be quickly resolved. Can you give the public assurance of that? Let me talk about a couple of things that so you indicated there was that problem with falsified records. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, it was well known um, the situation. We had our office of investigation looking into that. Uh, we were pursuing it as far as our enforcement process, and part of that enforcement process allows for alternative dispute resolution (ADR). TBA chose to go the ADR route. There was a meeting between TVA and the NRC. We actually issued an order that defined all the corrective actions TVA had to do to address the falsification of those records. We've inspected the corrective actions for that order, and we believe you know, they've taken the actions that they committed to us in the order. So I'd say for, for that issue, we think they've taken appropriate corrective action. We are very sensitive to falsification. Tommy can talk a little bit, but you know, we monitor the corrective action program. If there are examples where you know there's questions of um, accuracy of records, we, we highlight that, we put it into our process to see if we want to review it or investigate it. Um, we look at TBA's employee concerns program to see if that's an avenue where possible examples of uh, quality of records, falsification records could come up and we would pursue it that way. So we're very sensitive to examples that may, be, that may lead to falsification and, and make sure that we're appropriate aware of that and more importantly, the TVA is addressing this. So, so that, that's part of that uh, question. Um, I, mean, well, I, I think uh, last week with the uh, Unit 1 in the cycle mm -hmm. meeting and Bob Mom spoke a little bit you know, about the fact that you know, we, we were present at a lot of these meetings that TVA has. Uh, we talk to the people in the plant. Uh, we, we periodically meet with the employee concerns uh, program coordinator. Um, and, and so we, you know, we, we do this to, to really understand uh, what the environment, and, and by that I mean what, you know, what the safety conscious work environment is at the plant. Uh, so, you know, as far as the, uh, the order goes, I mean, I, I was involved with the, that inspection. Uh, we followed up on those corrective actions and, and you know, 
we, we quizzed you know, TVA and then independently verified um, as to whether or not those actions actually got carried through. Um, so as far as that's concerned, uh, we believe that those actions are adequate. Uh, and then, you know, it, it just from a general plant standpoint, uh, and I, as far as what I'm aware of, um, as of today, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, significant safety, uh, conscious work environment type issues. So, but, but we do monitor that. I mean, that, that's something that we're, we're highly sensitive to. Um, all our inspectors, I mean, anytime we're in a meeting, uh, we, we look at the interaction that takes place. Uh, you know, we review the individual perk, uh, similar to how Bob Mum uh, does it for the unit one side. I, I mean, I, I read every single perk that comes through. And we'll, we'll add it to you. And, and, you know, when we feel or deem necessary to follow up, we'll, we'll do so. I guess one, one other piece would be we have a very um, robust uh, allegation process. So if an individual comes to us, whether it's a member of the public or a worker there, and they express a concern to us, we have a process and it's very formal and, and it needs to be to make sure that we fully vet any, any issues. And, and we will look at those and for all those issues that fall within our regulatory purview, we will take action. Follow up on those and whistleblowers. Could, it's, it's part of it. So if things come to us in, in that program, we will certainly look into it. And whether we do an inspection or whether we launch an investigation with our office investigation, you know, we'll do an appropriate follow up on those issues. Thanks. I, I appreciate. Uh, TVA was assessed a seventy thousand dollar civil penalty in this. Uh, uh, in the quality because of the quality assurance program failures basically yeah uh, and, and it's noted that the TVA did not report the breakdown in the quality assurance program to the NRC even when it was reasonably apparent now has all this been corrected uh, of course within the same area here it says that the region 2 administrator uh, for the construction Fred Brown said that uh, TVA has aggressively addressed these issues but I'm, I'm interested in y'all and the inspectors. Uh, is there going to be any more <coughs> further quality assurance programs? I mean, are those parts still, are there still commercial non-nuclear graded parts in place out there? Or has, uh, has the NRC and TVA went in and inspected all the parts? And y'all are willing to say, hey, okay, everything is up and above board now. Everything's uh, rated uh for a nuclear plant. Is there going to be further problems there? So we identified a violation with their commercial grade dedication process and how they were going about dedicating commercial grade equipment parts for application in the nuclear power plant. Um, and we have followed up on the corrective actions, the changes that they've made to their program such that future commercial grade dedication um, applications where they bring in those parts and want to use them in the plant will be acceptable. That they'll thought they have the right program in place right now to, to complete those dedication processes. We also looked at TBA's actions to say, okay, what have they already procured under that problem that under that program that had these problems? And they went back and looked at all the items that they procured both and they had in the warehouse and in the plant. And to our satisfaction they have looked at all those items and deemed those items either acceptable for use or they've replaced them. So we think they, they have fixed the problem as far as there was a program issue and they went back and looked at where that may have caused problems in the plant and addressed that. As far as the um, reportability, you mentioned that, reporting to the ARC, that was another issue where they had a flaw in their program as far as how they went about looking at those type of issues and whether they determined that it should be reported to the NRC, and they have since fixed that. And that's been fixed? Yes. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate it. Well, just to follow up on that, so you're, you're comfortable that there's not a single item in the plant right now that has not been uh, properly inspected and certified? So remember, we're a sampling organization. We don't look at 100% of pretty much anything. So what we do look at you know, the corrective actions. Do they have appropriate corrective actions? If taken, we'll resolve the problem. And then we sample those. So that's what we did for this issue. So we did not go out and look at the 5,000 or 50,000, whatever the number was, 
we did not look at each one of those. We looked at the corrective actions they had in place, did the scope, was the scope appropriately to found the problem, and then we sampled certain, certain uh, items to make sure that they were following the process. So there could well be a pack fitting in the plant now that hasn't been inspected and certified. If they, if TVA took the corrective actions that were, that they had come, you know, within their program, if TVA took those corrective actions, and we believe they did, the answer is no, that they, that they would have addressed those. <clears throat> Um, uh, I, I was curious about that too because a year ago you said there was still un, un, a still undetermined number of parts. So basically, somehow you identified the determinate number, and TBA has told you that they have inspected all of those. Is that correct? Um, TBA identified the population based on their records on what they had procured under the commercial grade dedication program. And, and again, whether it was installed in the plan or in the warehouse or where it was. So they identified the population and the actions that they needed to take to make sure either it was acceptable for use or they replaced it. Or if it was in the warehouse, you know, they might have done the same thing. So they've done that since last year? That, that process it took them a while just because of the, the numbers. Um, Joe, how many numbers, how many items are we talking about? You guys have to go back and look at Well, what's part two is over 500 specific category IDs. Yeah, which, but when it boiled down to actual <coughs> parts, it was a lot higher than yeah, that. Numerous, numerous samples for each category. Yes. Yeah. It's not, and it took them a while to, to do that. And <coughs> last year, when we reported out that they were in the process, and, and now we can we have followed up with our inspection of, of those corrective actions that we're satisfied, we're satisfied that they completed them appropriately. Um, another question I had was uh, regarding the false, falsification of records. And um, I'm glad to hear that you think it's been resolved. And I'm curious about the process a little bit, if you don't mind revealing a little bit about that. Um, for example, the, the micrometer readings that were um, incorrectly recorded. Um, I just wonder, when you go to look at something like that, do you actually find out who recorded that and why, whether they did it on their own or whether someone asked them to do that and uh, what kind of actions are taken towards the person who does that to ensure that it doesn't happen again. I guess I'd start off there first is recognize TBA identified. It wasn't an NRC inspection that identified records for falsified. They identified the correct action program. We became aware of it as part of that program. It was a subcontractor, right? That, that a subcontractor had falsified records. But my question is, so did they identify who in that subcontractor? Yes. Do yes. they just stop doing business with that subcontractor? Or, you know, how, how does that work? In this example, they clearly identified who was aware and who was involved with false fire records. Uh, and the actual Department of Justice took legal actions against those individuals. TDA also took actions against them uh, as far as employment. They look at extent condition. Um, we actually had our office of investigation looking into that. You know, what was the scope of it? You know, how far did it go? So, so we did an investigation, which is different than inspector. I mean, we have investigators who ask questions and with badges, and we have inspectors you know, with flashlights and micrometers. So, um, so our office of investigation actually looked into that, uh, and they wrote an investigation report. And that all fed into what I described as an uh, alternative dispute resolution process where, where we looked at what was the issue, the NRC's view of the issue, the corrective actions that the PDA had taken, and new additional corrective actions. And again, we were satisfied that if they took those corrective actions appropriately, they would solve the problem. And then we followed up and did inspections to make sure those corrective actions were properly Let me add, uh, as part of those corrective actions, and, and we can provide you a copy of the order. Uh, there are some corrective actions in there uh, that talk about how TBA would uh, expand some of the language on the contract 
uh, to have their contract, you know, contractors, subcontractors, for example, uh, ensure that there's language where it would prevent cases like this. So I, I, I actually reviewed those procedures and those documents. So we, we, we confirmed that that language was there. I'm glad to hear that. I'm also delighted that TVA caught it. Well, they caught that. I mean, there's 300 people out there working at the site. We have four res inspectors and inspectors go out there every two basis. They certainly have more eyes out there. And that's why we monitor their corrective action program so when they identify an issue, especially if it has potential long-term falsification and things like that, we, we, we take that under consideration and certainly look at it. We don't want examples like that investor or problems like that to occur. And, you know, we encourage TV to be very aggressive towards those issues too. Just to make sure, you know, to have the mindset out there that they're not going to tolerate the fall by that. Real briefly, the, you mentioned 13,000 hours of inspection in a year, more or less, and you said that was about two and a half half times what you normally see. Can you say something about why? Is it because it's an older plant, uh, or is there something else, some other reason you're taking doing so much inspection there? I was comparing that to an operating plant. Okay. So we have a set inspection program we do for operating plants, okay. and, and it's certainly not, it's apples and oranges. Uh, construction and the 500 items we've got for you to do, is, is, there's no comparison in, in just how the program is set up and the number of things that we look at and the number of inspectors we have. So I would just use them to just give you a sense of, you know, we are out here, while, while we only are four full-time res inspectors and weekly uh, regional inspectors, we do spend a lot of time inspecting that. And, and that's why I highlighted we have eight pages, an eight page enclosure that talks about the inspection that we're going to do this year. That's not a trivial effort. That, that's a lot of inspection um, time we're going to be actually looking at you know, how TVA is constructing and testing this design. Yeah, so that was really trying to, again, give you an appreciation of what we're doing. Another questions or comments? Thank you for being thorough. I'm surprised that it lasted almost an hour. So we're going to take a break. The next meeting starts at